checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. So it's Ricky Steamboat versus Sika. Okay, this was worthwhile because my God, Ricky Steamboat's selling. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first, before the match, Gorilla's talking to Bobby and he goes, Ricky Steamboat's back and he's 100%. 100%. Mentally, we don't know, but physically, he's 100%. So they do this match, and Ricky Steamboat gets hot right in the neck. Oh, my God. And he goes, and he starts going. He did the fucking most ridiculous it selling was... over and over and over again. And what I just did, by the way, on video, yeah. I mean, he did it 10 times more you, you dramatically just, than I you did. You cannot justify it. He no. Did, like, drops to his knees, closes his eyes, sticks out his tongue, and kind of goes... <laughs> Every time he's hit in the throat. This was, if you took all of Shawn Michaels over something against Hulk Hogan at SummerSlam and just compressed it into every three seconds yes. over and over again. Yes. And it's Ricky Steamboat. Yes. It's, it's, the most it's ridiculous, not Brutus Beefcake. Preposterous overselling, but people were screaming like he could die in this match. And I mean, it was, you never seen selling like this. No. I mean, I have never, I never, I haven't. I've never seen anyone no, sell like that. It was so ridiculous. Yeah. It was so completely ridiculous. But that was the story. His neck. He could be killed by getting struck in the neck. And then, of course, finally at the end, he doesn't get killed. He uh, does his own strike to the neck. Goes up top. Hits his finish. I would do my I impression. Liked it. I would do my impression, but I didn't want to end up on Editor Sean's uh, yeah. clip of the week. <laughs> yeah. This is like the, the third or fourth match in the show that ended with the heel. Well, somebody missing a corner charge and the other guy hitting a move and winning. It's like they're, they're one finish on this show. The agent's doing a poor job here in 1987. Gorilla explains to Bobby that he has been friends with Hulk, Hulk Hogan and Andre, and Andre the Giant for a long time. This was so amazing. Still talks to Andre regularly, privately, with some cameras. Stop right there. Right. Bobby and Gorilla are clearly on different pages with this particular skit. <laughs> yep. Because Bobby is explaining, you know... Whatever, and he goes, you, ever, you know, you ever talk to Andre? You know, I don't know what he was expecting Gorilla to say, but he was not expecting Gorilla to say, yeah, we're friends. I talk to him all the time. Because mm -hmm. there's like a pause, and Bobby goes, when did you talk to him last? And then Gorilla goes, two weeks ago. And now Bobby's like, what the fuck? He's supposed to be the top heel, and you're supposed to be the baby. What the fuck are you doing? Worst so, so Bobby ever. is like, he's just, he's just like, he's gobsmacked, and he goes, "You talked to him two weeks ago." Girl goes, "Yeah, we were in Boston or whatever." And so, Bobby's just like, he just doesn't even know what to say. So finally, he just goes, "No, if you want to talk to him, you got to talk to me." And now Gorilla's totally blown it off. He's like, "He's my, he's, he's my fucking friend." You're his business manager. He's got a personal life. <laughs> Bobby's just like, you're killing this fucking angle, dude. What are you doing? I was dying. Skrilla just always, he just does what, he'll do anything to hijack any segment. He just did the most heinous thing ever in Professor yeah. Gross. Like, oh, we're COVID. good friends. And, we're good, close, Gorilla's, personal friends. Gorilla's cool with it. He did he a just, shitty thing, but man, you know, we're good. Nice guy. Out. Have cocktails. Got me totally okay. off guard. He never told me he was feeling this way after all these months, even though I talked to him every two weeks. God. <laughs> I was dying during this segment. So then, after the break, Bobby Heenan is appalled. The floorman or foreman or director <laughs> is giving signals to Gorilla and yes. not him. And Bobby Heenan says, this guy just had his honeymoon. He was so nervous, he put his pants to bed and hung himself over a chair all night. You've never seen Gorilla Monsoon break like this. He's fucking <laughs> cracked. He is howling. He's not even trying to maintain composure. And you can hear the guy in the background also start laughing. <laughs> and then they go to the next match. I get the feeling there's even more to this joke than we... Oh, I'm sure there was. <laughs> Some All kind of, of them. Yeah. There were so many inside jokes on this show. Like, there's a, there's a segment, I think it's the next segment, where um, they're talking about the Hercules match yeah. with... Um, Billy what, Jack. Billy, Billy Jack. Jack. And uh, and Bobby goes, you know, he's talking about something. He goes, uh, Gorilla asked him some question, like, do you know something or other? And Bobby goes, of course. I'm the manager of Billy Jack. I mean, Hercules. Damn it, I've had enough with you. He goes, you're out of here. He picks up his phone, and he calls, and he goes, may I speak to Terry Garvin? It's like, what the fuck's going on here? 
what the fuck's going on? Like, do they know they can, this is not live? Like, they can do a second take? <laughs> I think they just they just cracked themselves. And they were like, no, leave that one in. That was funny. Tape is expensive. I bet they didn't. Uh... This was oh, this is tape, yeah. Yeah, tape. they didn't do retakes. Film. The Can-Am Connection versus Tiger Chung Lee and the Gladiator. Oh. I've been greatly impressed with this Can-Am Connection since we started watching these shows. I'm begging for them to save the show. My heart was broken. There's a point in the middle here where this thing just completely fell apart. It's Martel, Zank, and Tiger Oh, Chun yeah, Lee, they were lost. Who wrestled for like 500 years. Yes. A combined, a combined 300 years in the ring. Yes. Are lost. It, it, it's so bad, the Can-Ams are getting booed. Yeah. Now, I will say this. So they got fucked up. And you know what they did? They barreled, barreled on through. through. You've never seen somebody barrel through like Martel and Zink did oh, yeah. here. Yeah, I have earlier on this show. So Actually. I didn't. <laughs> so they're, they're making their comeback, and Vince wants to give his opinion on Mania. And Jesse says, oh, like we're supposed to care about your what opinion? What a coward. You've, you've never been in the ring? You've never worked out? Yeah. I laughed. I laughed, laughed, laughed. it never worked out. That was a good one. So they won the sling slot, sling slot splash. This yeah, by was, the way, Vince's answer was, well, you know, I'll, I'll give my answer closer to the event. He wouldn't commit. The other guys, including Bruno, thought Andre was going to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bruno San Martino was picking Andre over Hulk Hogan. So I do want to mention, this is, for, this is not good, but at least the can ans were over. So everyone cheer to the end. But during this match... Vince McMahon on commentary confirmed that George Steele will be in Ricky Steamboat's corner when he faces Randy Savage at WrestleMania. Which, by the way, that's news. That means Randy Savage is officially facing Ricky Steamboat at Mania. That's how we learned it here. Yes. And then we go back to Gorilla and Bobby. And Gorilla starts talking about Savage Steamboat. And then adds also, Morocco and Orton versus the Can-Am Connection has now made an official match for Mania 3. And Bobby Heenan looks at him and says exactly what I was thinking. When did this happen? Just now. Yes. Just now. Then they say, also official for Mania 3 is Billy Jack Haynes versus Hercules. And they're going to wrestle right now. Yeah, it's our feature <laughs> contest. <laughs> so we were watching this match knowing they're going to have a match at WrestleMania anyway. They, they should not have mentioned that before <laughs> this match. This match should have been the setup for that match. You would think. I got to say one thing. There's been a lot of comedy and frivolity here on this show. But I will say one thing about this match. It is not about the current status of Billy Jack Haynes. But I watched this match, and I watched the uh, Ricky match, and I watched the uh, the match with uh, Tiger Chung Lee and Strike Force and et cetera, et cetera. And they all had one thing in common, which is these great workers were so fucking light. Hmm. They didn't touch each other. Like, the lariats they were throwing on this show were like, the I don't even know if they even came within five inches of each other doing these lariats. And, like, everything they did was just didn't even touch each other. And now, granted, there was a lot of illicit drug use back in those days and a lot of drinking and a lot of not taking care of yourself and the rings were a lot harder. But, goddamn, these guys working that light, their bodies were just ruined. And I know we've been talking about this for decades now, but, man, I see some of these guys nowadays, you know, just already physically thrashed, and they're in their, you know, some of them in their 20s, 30s, 40s. Like, these people are going to be wrecks come 70, 80. Unless we have some real cool medical technology coming up, like stem cells or whatever. But, man, it was just, it was amazing to see, like, they didn't touch each other. And these guys ended up ruined, physically ruined, Doing this easy ass light style. I know they were on the road a lot and everything, but God, this drug use. I think that was a big thing. That's not good for you. No, I mean I'm not gonna sit here and say that like nobody's doing anything nowadays. Like I'm sure a lot of people are, but they're they're doing it in in significantly smaller amounts. Like in the '80s, it was just take take as much as you want of whatever you can get. As much as you can. And yeah, yeah just it's just get as big as humanly possible. And nowadays, it's guys are like. You know, you don't hear about anybody getting suspended anymore for drug test failures. But, I mean, they do, in WWE at least, I mean, they do still test every now and then. But everyone's figured out, you know, how to stay under the limit or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but people have, obviously. Mm -hmm. But back then it was just unrestrained alcohol, drug, and performance-enhancing steroid use. 
And that was probably the big uh, the big difference. Mm-hmm. But still, everyone should take care of themselves. Yeah. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.